hi everybody welcome my name is Jackson mummy uh, glad to have you with us to talk about the California bar exam provide you some information and background about the test a little quick background about me uh, along with my wife Sarah uh, we own celebration bar review and we've been doing California bar since 1994 uh, and I've actually been teaching the Cal bar since before that back into the late 1980s so we're pretty familiar with the exam we've worked with thousands of students over the years who've taken the California bar in all of its permutations and iterations and we've got a, a new iteration coming up and we're going to talk about that today uh, a new form of the test starting in July 2017 and uh, some fairly big changes there so I uh, hope you'll stick with me for that information for the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes, what we want to do is talk about the California Bar Exam specifically, the elements of the exam, the requirements to take the test, a little bit about how we go about preparing our students to uh, prepare and, and pass that exam successfully. I hope you'll find that this is a useful introduction and an interview, an, an overview of what's involved if you're thinking about taking the bar exam, or perhaps you've already decided to take the test and you're simply trying to find a course that will meet your particular needs. Now, to begin with, uh, some basic information is that uh, the exam is only offered twice a year, and it's given now only on the last Tuesday and Wednesday in the months of February and the months of July. Now, this is a change because the exam up until uh, July of 2017 had been a three-day test. Starting in July 2017, it's going to become a two-day exam, Tuesday and Wednesday only, and we'll talk about the details of that as we go along. But these are the only times that the exam is offered. Now, it is given in a number of locations around the state of California, and you must take the, the bar exam in the state of California. One of the nice things is you can choose where you want to sit for the exam. Um, most people will, uh, who are coming from out of state, for example, or foreign countries, will choose Southern California, the Los Angeles or Orange County area. But there are test sites in San Diego. There are test sites in the central uh, part of the state in Sacramento and uh, in the northern part of the state up in the San Francisco and Oakland area as well. Those are some of the primary locations, but there are many to consider. Uh, if you're absolutely lost about which one to take, I would highly recommend um, going to Pasadena. That's a great test center. Um, and the Ontario Center is also a really good one. They're a little bit smaller and uh, a little more friendly, I think, generally. So a couple of locations, lots of choices for you. And you choose your location after you apply for the exam. Now, speaking of application, there are some important deadlines when it comes to applying for the exam, and these are always uh, pieces of information that you should check and confirm with the bar examiners. They're current as of the time I'm recording, but they're fluid and they do change, and uh, we don't take responsibility for that. It's up to you to, to talk to the bar examiners. So here are some deadlines, at least right now. If you're taking the July bar exam, the what they call the timely filing deadline, in other words, the deadline in which there is no additional financial penalty to file. That timely filing deadline is April 1st of the same year. Then there's a late filing deadline of April 30th. So you've got this window from April 1st through April 30th in which you can get a late filing in. There is a final deadline of June 15th of the year. So that's the absolute cutoff. By June 15th, you're cut off from taking the July test. So no applications after June 15th for the July exam. Now, if you're taking the February bar exam, the timely filing deadline is November 1st of the preceding year, and the late date, again, is November 30th. So the month of November uh, is that uh, window for you. And the final deadline for the February test is January 15th, the same year of the exam. Now, obviously, it's important that you watch those deadlines carefully because they do tend to change, and it's totally up to the examiners whether or not to accept your application. So it's really important that you're timely with your correspondence and your filing into the examiners. Now, unlike some other states, California does not require you to submit all of your character and fitness applications uh, and that information prior to sitting for the bar exam. So perhaps you came from a state and filed an application at an earlier time where you had to do the application before you could actually sit for the exam. That is not the case in California. You will be required to file an application for determination of moral character. That can be done after you register. Uh, so you can sit for the exam first and then do the character and fitness check. Now, as you might imagine, there are some fees associated uh, with taking the California bar exam. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, and again, you should check directly with the bar examiners for the latest information on this. But as of the time of this recording, the basic filing fee to take the general bar exam, that's the full two-day test, is $677. Now, 
counterintuitively, I think to me, um, the fee is higher for the one day attorney exam. That fee is actually $983. And where they come up with these numbers, I have no idea. Um, there's a separate fee for the character and fitness investigation. Currently that stands at $551. <clears throat> and then as you might expect, there are fees for extensions and incomplete filings. There are late fees if those apply to you, as well as other fees for things like laptops, that's currently $153 to type your essays and performance test, and we would encourage you to do that. Um, again, relative to some other jurisdictions, these fees are a fairly reasonable amount, um, but the amounts do have to be paid in advance of taking the bar exam, so you can't finance them or tell them, uh, I'll pay after I see if I passed or not. No, it doesn't work that way. Now, um, you're going to have to start that process early with the examiners. You want to do that by going online to the California Bar Examiner's website. And when you get to the website, you will notice that the Cal Bar Examiners have two locations, physical locations, one in Los Angeles, one in San Francisco. Um, doesn't really matter which one you use, but you want to contact them early, get that process begun. You can do some of the application process online. Some of it you'll have to fill out and return by uh, mail. Now, one of the major questions uh, for people who are taking the Cal Bar uh, is really a fundamental one, and that is, which one of these many exams called the California Bar am I actually eligible to take? And that's because California has a whole series of different variants of their exam. So let's break those down. The first thing is what's called the general bar exam. <clears throat> this is the regular test, the regular bar. And when you think of the test, this is the one that most people have to take. The general bar exam consists of the multi-state bar exam. This is a 200 question multiple choice test. We'll talk about that. And what's called the California written portion of the exam made up of essays and a performance test. Now you're eligible to take this two day exam if you've graduated from an American Bar Association accredited law school located anywhere in the United States. So if you've gone to an ABA law school and you graduated from that school with a JD, you're eligible to take the general bar exam. You're also eligible to take the general bar exam if you went to a state of California accredited law school, and there's a list of those, a fairly small list, or if you attended a correspondence law school and, and this is a very big if, if you went to a correspondence law school if you passed the California first year exam previously. Okay, so I gotta back up here. The first year exam in California is also called the Baby Bar or the FYLSE, First Year Law School Exam. And that test is designed specifically for students who attended unaccredited law schools in California and correspondence schools and for some foreign trained attorneys who by application are required to take that exam. Now, to be clear, if you've gone to an ABA accredited law school, the Baby Bar does not apply to you. You don't need to worry about it. However, if you are at an unaccredited state school or a correspondence law school, or if you went to a law school in a foreign country that did not use a legal system similar to that in the United States, in other words, not a common law system, then you probably had to take the baby bar or first year exam and pass that, and then you would be uh, either able to go on and complete your law school education and sit for the general bar, or in the case of a foreign trained attorney, you may have to take an LLM course of program and then sit for the general bar. So a couple different ways through that. Now, for those of you who suddenly realize, oh my gosh, I think I might have to take the baby bar. We have a course for that. We can help you with that. And uh, all you have to do is go to our website at celebrationbarreview.com, click under course information and look for the California page and we'll explain more about it there. In any event, um, you've got to make a decision or find out if you, if you have to take that. The vast majority of you watching this video will not have to deal with the baby bar at all and you don't need to worry about it. If you're a foreign trained attorney and you think there's a possibility that you might, you want to contact the examiners right away and I'll have more to say about that in a moment. So if you've taken and passed the baby bar or you don't need to take it, then you're eligible for the general bar exam after you graduate from law school. Now, the third kind of group that we have to talk about, there were the general bar takers, there were the people that might have to take the baby bar and then the general bar. And the third kind of group are those people who've already been in practice as an attorney. For those individuals, there's an option uh, for what's called the attorney exam. And to take the attorney exam, you need to have been in practice for the four preceding years before you sit for the test. Now, what's active practice? 
Well, generally, you have to submit your credentials to the bar examiners, and they'll make a case-by-case -case determination of your, uh, uh, your application. And it's not always simply holding a license. Um, if you haven't done anything with that license, or you let your dues lapse, or you let your bar membership lapse from another state, then typically that will not count as a year of active practice. But beyond that, my general experience over the past years has been that the examiners in California are pretty lenient about offering attorney exam status. If you qualify for that status, our recommendation is that you accept it. There are a couple of reasons for that. The first is that attorney applicants do not have to sit or take the multi-state bar exam, what we'll refer to today as the MBE. What that means is you'll have a lot less information that you have to study, far less detailed amount of information that you need to put into your brain. And if you're anything like me, the older you get, the tougher it is to keep stuff in your head. The less things you have to know, I think the better off you are. In our experience, attorney applicants do better when they do not take the multi-state exam. It's very rare, actually, for someone to come up statistically better by taking that exam if they don't need to do it. So the attorney exam is one of the options we encourage you, if you're eligible, sit for that option. And then the last group that I've already mentioned, but I want to talk to specifically, are those who are trained as attorneys in foreign jurisdictions. Now, I talked about the people who came from non-common law jurisdictions. You'll probably have to sit for the baby bar. But not all foreign attorneys have to take that exam. In fact, if you went to law school in Canada or anywhere in the United Kingdom, uh, if you went to law school in India, uh, in Mexico, in most of uh, the schools there, uh, in many schools in South America, in any of the common law jurisdictions, the odds are very good that you will be admitted to sit for the general bar exam. Not the one-day attorney's exam, even if you're an attorney in your home country, but to sit for the two-day general bar. Now, if you train somewhere else uh, outside of those countries I just mentioned, you may not be eligible immediately, depending on what school you went to and what your background is and how long you've been in practice. So you might not be eligible immediately to take the general bar exam. And either way, you have to contact the examiners directly to get a ruling or a decision. And they make these decisions on an individual case-by-case -case basis. So <clears throat> if you're a graduate of a foreign law school, let's say in the Soviet Union, or in the Far East, uh, Japan, China, Taiwan, um, you may have some difficulties, uh, but nonetheless, you'll probably be admitted to sit for the general bar exam. Uh, the reality is that it's not automatic status in those countries to be able to take the exam here. Um, and if the examiners say, nope, your, quali your qualifications are not enough, they will tell you that you need an LLM, which is an advanced legal degree from a US approved law school, and or the first year baby bar exam. Now, if you're taking the general bar as a foreign trained attorney, I want to assure you that I've worked with foreign trained attorneys from literally all over the world, and I can tell you that many of them find the exam is completely uh, manageable. I've helped them pass it, uh, and they can do quite well on it. The biggest challenge really are two things. One is if English is not your first language, you'll need extra time to study. And secondly, of course, are just the culture and the laws of the United States. So to the extent that English is your first or primary language, even if you were trained in a foreign country, I don't want you to be afraid of this exam. You probably need about six to nine months to prepare if that uh, is your circumstance. If you're from a foreign trained country and English is not your first language, I would strongly suggest that you give yourself about a year of preparation and study before you take the test. Now, foreign trained attorneys, as I said, have to contact the examiners. You have to start that process early and find out what your status is. You'll want to begin studying long before you get approved for the final steps of taking the bar. One other note for foreign trained attorneys. We have a separate page on our website. Again, if you go to course information and just scroll down so you see the word foreign, we have a page uh, of information for foreign trained attorneys and a separate lecture just on the rules as they apply to you. So make sure you check that out at celebrationbarreview.com. Okay, well, with those parameters or basics of the exam in place, let's take a, a few minutes now and talk a little bit about how the exam itself is structured. There are three components to the California bar exam, um, and let's break each of those down. The first is, uh, as I've already mentioned, the multi-state bar exam, or the MBE. This is given nationally, every jurisdiction, uh, in the country on the last Wednesday in February and the last Wednesday of July. The multi-state bar is a 200-question, six-hour test, 
multiple choice questions. It's worth 50% of your total score on the California bar. And this is a change. For those of you that are familiar with the old version of the Cal bar, you now get 50% based of your score on the multi-state instead of the old 35%. So it's worth a lot more. As I said, the test is multiple choice. There are 100 questions in the morning session uh, conducted over three hours, and then 100 questions in a three-hour afternoon session. The multi-state exam consists of seven subjects, and these are drawn from broad areas of the law, and they include uh, really generic, generalized, and not California-specific law. The seven subject areas are federal constitutional law, the federal rules of evidence, tort law, contracts and sales, which actually includes the Uniform Commercial Code, Article 2, sales. Uh, the next subject is real property. The next is criminal law and criminal procedure combined together in one subject. And then the seventh subject recently added was federal civil procedure and federal jurisdiction. Now, those seven subjects are tested in equal proportions. That is to say that there will be 25 questions in each of those seven subjects that count towards your total score. Now, if you're a math wizard, uh, you've already figured out, hey, wait a minute, 25 times 7 is 175, not 200. What gives? What are the other 25 uh, questions on the test? I'm glad you asked. Uh, the other 25 represent what are called evaluation questions. These are questions that are sprinkled throughout the test on all subjects. They are not identified in any way on the exam, but they're used by the bar examiners uh, to evaluate whether or not the, it would be good questions later for inclusion in a later version of the MBE. Um, it used to be that there were only 10 of those questions on the exam and you were actually graded on 190 questions. That has changed effective with February 2017's exams. So now we have 175 questions. And for some of you, that probably raises the question, well, if I only get credit for 175, that must make it tougher to pass the bar because there are fewer questions. The actual answer to that is no, it doesn't do it at all because every multi-state bar exam is actually scaled to compare it to the original MBE. The scaling process takes your raw total of correct answers and it then adds a number based on the degree of difficulty uh, to make every test that's ever been given for the multi-state uh, presumably equal. What that means is you'll see a higher scale bump uh, in these 175 question exams than you had back in the days of 190. The net result is you don't have to do anything differently. You won't know what these questions are. They'll be spread throughout both sessions, morning and afternoon. They'll come across all subjects and uh, there's no way to identify them. So it's not something you can worry about or deal with, uh, but ultimately it won't make much of a difference either. Now, when we talk about the multi-state exam, uh, it's important to point out that it is graded and offered uh, and prepared for you by the National Conference of Bar Examiners, of which we're a licensee. So we actually have uh, licensed multi-state questions over 1,900 uh, in our course, along with answer explanations. And there are more details about the multi-state on our website as well. All right. So the first part of your exam, as I said, the multi-state is graded. This is a, a machine scored Scantron uh, item. And uh, it's done on a scale of zero to 200. Uh, that's the scaling that, that goes on with the correct number of questions comprising your raw score. And then it's translated to a scaled score as I just described. And that will be, then be added into your California score as part of a compensatory model in which you're then given a final grade for passing or not passing the California bar exam. Now, the purpose of scaling, as I said, is to make the test uh, equal or equivalent across all exams. Once that's been done by the National Conference of Bar Examiners, what happens is that the California bar examiners take that number and they uh, tack a zero on to the end of it. So if you got a 144 scale, they put a zero at the end of it and they call it a 1440. That's good news because 1440 is the passing number that you need across the entire California bar exam. Now, I wanna make something really clear at this point, and that is that California requires that you pass the entire test. There's no opportunity or ability to just pass the MBE or just pass the written portion and come back later and do the other, for example, as they offer in Florida. So you have to pass the whole thing. Well, how does that work? Well, as I said, the goal should be a 144 or a 1440 uh, because that's our passing score. How do you get to 144 on the multi-state exam? Well, we think it's gonna take about 130 questions correct 
out of the 175 that are graded in order to get to that result. In real life, that would probably be like a C, a C minus, uh, but that's good enough to be a lawyer in California. So that's our, our threshold that we're looking for is that 144. All right, so that's the first part of the exam. Now, the other two parts of the exam come together under the heading of the California written portion, but they're actually two different kinds of tests. The first of these is the California essay exam. And along with the performance test, it's worth the remaining 50% of your score. So the goal is you get 1440 on the MBE and you wanna get 1440 on the California written portion. Now the essay part of that written portion is made up of five separate essay questions each one an hour in length, and they're given to you uh, in, group, in groups. So you'll get three one-hour questions on Tuesday morning, and then in the afternoon, you'll get two more one-hour questions plus a performance test. The essays are designed to test primarily your ability to identify relevant law and apply the current and correct facts to that law, and then to adequately and accurately communicate it under the time pressure of an exam. It is not a substantive legal test in the form of you need to memorize and recite elements and rules wildly. That's not it. It is not a law school exam, and we want to emphasize that to you. The inclination that a lot of bar takers have is to think that essays are simply a way to test uh, how much black letter law you know. That is not the case in California, and it's not the case for the essay part of the exam. The essays are designed to test your reasoning ability, your writing ability, your ability to find and formulate disputes, and then use the law to help resolve those disputes. Um, that's the form that we teach. We've had great success with it, and it's been our experience, and the statistics bear this out, that traditional IRAC, IRAC writing, uh, has less than a 50% success rate on this exam. So we don't teach that methodology. Now, if the exams, the essays, are designed to test these other abilities, what's the subject matter behind them? And the subject matter for the essays include all of the multi-state subjects that I noted for you previously. So that would be all generalized generic federal law. In addition to that, there are questions that deal with California-specific subjects, and here are those uh, topics. You could get questions dealing with California civil procedure, California evidence, California community property, California corporations, which could include partnerships and other entities like agency, California professional responsibilities, California remedies, uh, predominantly in the area of contracts, torts, and property, um, and then California trusts and California wills. Now, you notice most of those subjects are, what did I say, California specific. Um, all of these are uh, state specific topics, and um, you're going to have to know California law. Now to help you with that, we're going to provide for the entire course a full set of written comprehensive outlines for every subject, both multi-state and California. In addition, we're gonna provide uh, video and audio lectures walking you through each subject. Then we're going to provide you with sample questions, multi-state questions, essay questions, along with model and sample answers and writing workshops and essay uh, workshops in which I go through uh, selected essays in each topic. So a lot of information to help you with all of that, as well as a syllabus and a study guide step by step. We'll also cover the performance test, which I'll talk about in a moment. So as you see, you've got a lot of subjects to cover. Um, all of those California specific topics, uh, as well as the federal uh, multi-state subjects. Now very often, uh, the essays in California test more than one area in a specific question. But the questions tend to be pretty straightforward. Uh, we think they're pretty manageable if you're not trying to memorize and recite. Most people who will type their uh, essays, and that would be our recommendation, will write answers of about 1,100 to 1,400 words in an hour, and that is perfectly sufficient to cover the calls of the question uh, that the examiners offer. And as I said, you're going to find in our course, we cover the essays in great detail, lots of practice. Uh, we'll give you the lectures on the subjects, the written materials, uh, and then we'll go through them uh, again in essay writing workshops. On top of all of that, we offer several different choices for mentoring. Uh, we've got everything from a, a very economical basic course in which you just use our materials, the written materials and the writing workshops and the lectures and sample and model answers. And then we've got a personal mentoring service in which you work with me individually in half an hour uh, study conferences that are done by uh, video. 
and those are scheduled and they're one-on-one -on -one, and uh, uh, that's what we call personal mentoring and you get 15 of those conferences in that course uh, which is plenty uh, but if you want more, we have something called the Premium Mentoring Course, which gives you the access to me for 25 conferences. So lots of opportunities, uh, just depending on what your budget and what your needs might be. So I think that uh, there's everything that you need to be successful for that part of the exam, in fact, for the entire exam. All right, so that's our essays. <clears throat> We've talked about the multi-state. Now there's one final co component that I've mentioned a couple of times, and I've saved it to the end because it represents another change in the California bar. This is the performance test part of the exam, and this is included in the 50% of your score that's called the written part of the test. <clears throat> the performance test may be something that you're not entirely familiar with. Um, <clears throat> it started really back in California, uh, probably 20 plus years ago, as a three hour uh, test and it was given, there were two of them that were given in the Cal Bar every time. Well, that test is going away and beginning in July 2017, it's replaced with a 90 minute performance test and only one of them will be given on the exam. Now, the 90 minute performance test is what's been used by the National Conference of Bar Examiners for many, many years. And we're again, uh, as a licensee, we've got all of those performance tests along with the examiner's grading sheets, point sheets, model and sample answers and we provide workshops and lectures and opportunities for you to practice and work through the performance test. Now, if you have no idea what a performance test is, it's really s designed to be similar to what you would expect or find in real life as a lawyering task, and or at least what the bar examiners think of as a real life lawyering task. But essentially what happens is that you're given a package of information um, and there are two components. There's a file and a library. In the library, uh, you'll be given uh, material from a fictional jurisdiction, a library of cases. Uh, sometimes you'll be given some statutes or selected statutes. And in the file part of the uh, package, you'll receive client interviews, transcripts, uh, deposition testimony, letters to clients, maybe an example of what uh, the uh, task is, a, is supposed to look like. And we call all of that a file. So you've got a file and you've got a library. The typical package on a 90 minute performance test runs about 10 to 15 pages long. That's much better than the uh, 25 to 30 that the three hour test used to have. And in this package, you're going to be given a task. You'll be told to perform some lawyer-like uh, writing task. Prepare a letter uh, for the attorney to present to the client. Uh, prepare a closing argument for a jury in a, a, a civil trial or a criminal trial. Um, prepare a settlement agreement to be proposed, uh, prepare a memo to an investigator of the materials or information needed uh, to prepare for a case, uh, analyze the claims of uh, the litigants in a civil matter in a property transaction, and so on and so forth. You can basically break performance tests into two kinds of audiences, a legal audience and a non-legal audience, and two types of tone, persuasive and objective. The most common of these will be the objective uh, tone to a legal audience, and that's the sort of thing that you would typically see on the exam. But again, in our course, we'll show you examples of each of these styles and forms. We'll give you lots of practice at doing these. The performance test at first glance can be a little bit intimidating if you've never done one uh, because it seems unusual for an exam setting. But in fact, it's what most attorneys are asked to do day in and day out. So if you've been in practice for a number of years, Definitely, if you're taking the attorney's exam, you're going to love the performance test. Um, and I think most of you ultimately will find it relatively easy and fairly enjoyable because you don't really have to know any law. You just have to take what's in the library and use that as a lens or a filter to apply it to the facts that you find in the file. If you're just coming out of law school, uh, this may uh, remind you of something you did to write on to a law journal or for moot court. Um, and it's, a, it's kind of a fun uh, task, fun as, <laughs> as much fun as a bar exam can be. Um, but in any event, we'll show you how to do it. We'll take you step by step through how to prepare it, how to write it, how to organize it, how to get it on the computer and be ready to go for it. Um, <clears throat> and that's the third part of the test, the performance exam. Now in California, this new 90 minute performance exam will be given in the afternoon on Tuesday along with the two one hour essays. So you'll actually have a three and a half hour, a little bit longer afternoon session than you had in the morning. And if you're thinking about the 90 minutes for the performance test and how it breaks out, 
most people will spend about half of that time preparing and about half of the time writing their answer. Okay, so we've got these three parts of the exam. How is the scoring itself actually put together? Well, you take all of the elements and you combine them. The multi-state and the California written portion are graded separately, and then they're combined using something that the examiners call an equi percentile method. And what happens in effect, as I said, is that the multi-state exam is worth about 50, it's worth fi exactly 50% of your total score, and the California written portion is worth the other 50%. In order to pass, you have to receive a combined score of 1440 out of a combined possible 2,000 points. It gets a little confusing here, and I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but basically, you pass if after a first reading of your work and scoring, you got between 1466. Um, if you get higher than that, you pass the exam for sure. You're done, finished, you get your uh, passing score. If you fell below 1390, you failed. That done, over, no, no recourse. The, but what happens if you scored above 1390 but less than 1466? Well, in that case, you get a second read. That is, a, a new set of graders look at your essays and performance tests, and your score is uh, average between the first read and the second read. If that average after the two reads is 1440, you pass. Uh, here's an interesting note. Very rarely does the second read ever raise the score. It almost always lowers it, uh, so something to keep in mind. Now there's also an opportunity for a third read, or what's called a reappraisal, if your average was at least 1412 to 1440. So if they do that second read, and now you fall 1412 to 1440, there can actually be a third reading. Um, and then your exam is looked at again to see if it should pass. And I'm not going to take you through the details today of how those scores are converted. What you need to know uh, is that you're going to have to write competently though not spectacularly. You need to write ans essay answers in which on a 100 point score, you're getting 60 or better uh, out of 100 points. The same for the performance test. On the um, multi-state, as I said, you need to get about 130 raw questions correct to get yourself up to that 144 threshold for the MBE. But a higher score in the essays offsets a lower multi-state score and vice versa. So uh, the whole point is that you've got to get to 1440 in that 2,000 uh, point total overall. Um, so if you're doing that, uh, then you pass. Obviously, you want to get above that 1440, so you get a clean pass at 1466. So that's challenging, but certainly uh, people do it all the time. All right, so those are the elements that make up the California bar exam. Now, I have to tell you that there's an additional test uh, that will apply to some of you. This is the Multi-State Professional Responsibility Exam, also called the MPRE. This is a separate compliance test that's given uh, a few days after the bar exam in March and in August, and then for a third time in the first week of November. The MPRE is given by the National Conference of Bar Examiners. It's given throughout the United States, and you do not have to take that test in California to apply the score to the California exam. The MPRE is a two-hour, five-minute, 60-question exam, of which 50 questions actually count. We have a course separately for the MPRE. You can sign up for that when you sign up for our California course. The MPRE is not designed to trip you up or catch you, um, and the score that's required to pass on a scaled score is 86. What that translates to is roughly 42 correct out of the 50 scored items. Again, there are 10 evaluation questions on that exam. And while that might sound like a very steep threshold, in reality, these are not difficult questions and you'll find it very easy to get through that. Now, I tell you about all this, but I also have to say most of you will not have to take this exam. If you took professional responsibility in law school and you got a, a, a satisfactory grade, you'll submit that information to the California bar examiners and you'll be waived out of that exam. The MPRE will be most in effect for foreign trained attorneys, uh, people from uh, certain uh, jurisdictions where they never took it or maybe didn't take professional responsibility uh, previously, and you need to find out from the examiners if that's a requirement for you. You do not have to take that test before you take the California General Bar. You can do it afterwards and get your results uh, at the same time. Okay, so for the attorney exam, what happens? Well, you take the performance test and the essays that one day on Tuesday, and then if necessary, the professional responsibility exam. You don't take the MBE at all. 
uh, and you're just given an imputed score of 1440 on your, the multi-state you didn't take, and then uh, you're given your score. Everyone else will sit for the two days of the exam. Now, undoubtedly, you've heard people say that the California bar is brutally difficult, and that's true. It's got the lowest pass rate of any bar exam in the United States by far. Uh, the overall pass rate is less than 50%, at least as I'm recording today. And that certainly should give you some uh, concern. Uh, I would say if you thought you were going to just prepare in a few weeks or a couple of weekends or cram for a couple of weeks, uh, you probably won't pass. If you plan on preparing by doing what you did in law school, using IRAC and issue spotting and memorization, you probably won't pass. That's the reality. If you're a foreign trained attorney and you give yourself less than six months, uh, you probably won't pass, at least on the first try. Now, California will let you take the exam as many times as you want. And I've worked with people who have taken the exam as many as 20 times. The good news is I've actually helped some of those people pass on as many as their 20th try. Uh, the good news is I didn't have to take them through all 20 um, uh, to, to be successful. But we've got a terrific track record over the years of working with people who've taken and failed this exam. If you took the exam previously, I think you're going to like the new form of the exam. The 50-50 scoring is a big change. It puts a lot more weight on the multi-state, and that's good for most everyone. Um, and frankly, if you've taken the exam and you've used the traditional form of preparation, what I call the big box bar review, I think you're going to find that this approach that we offer is quite different. It's much more intuitive. It's much more direct. It gives you a better writing style, gives you a better way to study. And we use a lot of tools to help with that. Plus, we offer these mentoring options. And I want to encourage you, if you're someone that's taken and failed this exam previously, uh, you should look at the personal or the premium mentoring course if you can afford it. Those are absolutely the best way to get my direct input with you about your work. If you're a first-time bar taker or you're someone that feels pretty confident about your ability to take this exam, or if your budget just doesn't permit it, look at our basic mentored course. You can take that uh, and pay for it over 12 months' time. It's totally affordable, and it gives you access to all of the information and resources that you need to be successful on the exam. Don't take this test lightly, uh, but don't be terrified by it either. The reality is that it, there are more bar takers in California than anywhere else in the country. They come from an extraordinary variety of backgrounds and walks of lives, uh, and they prepare in a wildly uh, strange number of ways. And, and frankly, a lot of people fail this exam because they really don't know how to prepare for it, not because the test is too difficult. So I am really thrilled that you've stayed with me to hear this information, to get a sense of how we prepare. I can assure you that our track record in California in working with people from all kinds of uh, circumstances and situations is probably unparalleled. And I invite you to go to our website, uh, and on that site, you'll see a section for testimonials and case studies. Be sure to check out the uh, comments and the video interviews with past California bar students. I think you'll be really amazed and uh, pleased at what they have to say about how their preparation with Celebration Bar Review helped them. I, uh, I'm glad to have uh, spent this time with you today. I, I appreciate you giving me your time and, and attention.